It is 3-27-2015. We wrap up uh, Robert Jensen's Doctrine of Creation. This is the final third moment. We've already covered the uh, first moment of uh, internal to the Father. And then uh, we covered the speech act when the Father goes out of himself to create. Now we reach the third moment of uh, perdurance, which that's a word... Jensen got from Luther, the permanence and endurance, the perdurance of creation. And we're going to take a look at this third moment. It's going to add uh, rhythm 11, 12, and 13. We're going to add three rhythms. We've had uh, our 10 up to this point. We had six in the first moment, four in the second, and we're going to have three here in the third moment. So you should be able to... Uh, read the screen for the third moment. The first two moments you won't. They were reduced so I'd have room for the third. But when you pull up the first two lectures, you'll have the first and second moments enlarged. So we'll begin with the third moment. Uh, and the 11th rhythm reads that uh, actuality equals the becoming of perfecting creation the becoming of perfecting creation. There are 13 aspects. Jensen begins with the concept of envelopment. Our work of perfecting is bracketed by the triune divinity of that tri-mutual space, of usia space. And then he uses the concept of accommodation because God makes room within himself for the other reality which is becoming actualized under the concept of time. We understand that this opening within God is the uh, making room for time within eternity. So God opens within himself room for time within eternity. Eternity takes up and envelops time through the mediation of the speech act and therefore this moment is an implosion for Jensen. The divine opening is created through the tri-mutual implosion within God's usia space. He uses the concept of a drama to point out that the uh, this envelopment of uh, finite time within eternity proceeds through the tri-mutual dramatic discourse. So in order for creation to become actual, God enters into the uh, historical drama and uh, the historical dramatic discourse. The Father is the RK source of the space that opens up. And under positing the creative utterance of the Father, let there be, is the positing act of the Spirit that frees up the Father from retaining all being within his self-enclosure. So the Spirit essentially initiates the let there be of God's own future. Therefore, we can look at a, a triad of the modalities in the following way. The Father is the initiating actuality of creation. The Son defines the dramatic content of the meaning of that uh, intentionality of creation. And the Spirit performs the liberating of actuality within the dimension of time. The Son speaks the Father's intentionality as an indwelling purposiveness within the creative spirit. So there is a holding open, the Son holds open that opening of space of being uh, within eternity for the participation of the finite self within the dimension of time. And the twelfth rhythm speaks to this. It talks about our participation, the self's participation in God's story. There's three aspects. <clears throat> the space for participation is opened up by the Father by conversing with the Son in an ousia space. It's a conversing with the Son as the Son of Man other, where the Son takes on a full representation of humanity. On the Son's side of this act, there is the Son who takes up 
the concept of uh, the absolute acceptance of being. So realization uh, passes through the three modalities of the Father who commands, let there be, the Son who defines the content of the command, and the Spirit who indwells the self to draw the self into the answer of participation. Remember, it's a hearing and then an answering on our part. And this is the work of the Spirit that indwells the self and then draws it into answering with participation. So the 13th and final rhythm of creation is uh, to understand that the past and the future have their being as they are made present through this participation. He borrows from uh, Augustine's Confessions, the 11th book, where eternity equals a single moment that is always present, past and future are gathered up within the soul's presentness. And that gathering up within the soul is a gathering as memory, present apprehension, and eschatological expectation. So we have the following uh, 13th rhythm axiom. The soul's gathering presence of the promised future creates the image of the divine. And he uses uh, the concept of a distentio, and distentio is the soul's accommodation or the soul's opening up of room for the past and the future. It becomes a space that will hold the divine present intentionality for creation. And so essentially it is an internalized anticipation or an internalized eschatological hope that becomes a remembered motivation. We don't lose it even after we posit our expectation. We retain the initial positing and the return within memory and it qualifies our motivational base. But this whole process within the self of a, or an internalizing and then modifying our motivational base uh, produces the actual image of the divine presence. This is how we uh, reflect the image of God. This is how we become image bearers. This image is produced in the soul and then it is located in reference to the external timeline as its direct directional sense. So we are in the process of participating through a participating with our own uh, eschatological uh, hope that we've internalized and a uh, coupled with a, a motivational base that empowers it. It's all produced by the soul and the psyche side of, of our finite existence. But it is a transcendental shaping. It is a shaping that is a, triggered by and empowered by that tri-mutual space of discourse between the Father and the Son and the Spirit within which we have been drawn up and included in and empowered by. So that's what gives us that uh, transcendental aspect of our shaping of reality as we map out the content and the horizon of our own eschatological hope. So it is all about uh, the perfecting of creation. The third moment is the moment where we understand that creation is not finished. That creation is, uh, if you remember last time, we understood creation is in an intermediate state. It is in an intermediate state of goodness. We do perceive it eschatologically as good. But in order to uh, actualize that eschatological hope of creation being good and moving toward the good, it means, first of all, that uh, God performs the accommodation of making room for our participation uh, within our finite time to be raised up within his uh, space of eternity. And then we as individuals, we open up our souls and we open up an accommodation to allow the, uh, the work of perfection, the work of a perfecting creation to take place by allowing that as a space within us for uh, 
internalizing uh, the ideal and internalizing the eschatological hope, working that out in uh, praxis positing, and that becomes a, a transcendental type of shaping that we get involved in in trying to move creation forward more and more perfect and more in correspondence with the divine. So our third moment is very, very, very specifically the one of a participatory work toward the perfecting of creation as we are invited to participate in the tri-mutual discourse of the Usia space within the Trinitarian Godhead. So we are invited through Christ and through the Christ event to be gathered up into this tri-mutual converse and then we become filled with the spirit of that converse and it uh, empowers us to form our own positings as we move closer and closer to perfecting the creation that is currently in an intermediate state. It gives us a very quick look, but all three looks basically were just very short lectures, but you'll have to go back to the previous two lectures to actually be able to read the first and the second moment. I had to reduce the, uh, the font size in order to enlarge the third moment for this particular talk. So you'll have to go through all three moments in all three talks if you wanted to, to actually see the uh, written documentation for that uh, each respective moment. But it gives us a good look at his doctrine of creation, which uh, was the imminent act of the Father's will, and then the uh, mosaic amar of a speech act, which is uh, Christ who gives the content for the speech act. And then that uh, work of uh, perfection and perdurance, where we work and participate within that trimutual usia space within God to move creation forward. That puts us up through uh, page 33, and it gives us Robert Jensen's first uh, consolidated uh, three-moment look at the doctrine of creation.